Gentlemen, indeed. God bless you, I know beggars is more like it. Now, be off with you before they're law on you. Away, away, be off. A Merry Christmas to you, Mr. Scrooge. Ah. A Merry Christmas, Uncle, and God bless. Who calls me, Uncle? Who else but your nephew? Oh, Fred, I might have known. I'm wasting your time caterwauling with those just as lazy as you are. Caterwauling, perhaps, but not wasting time. Come sing with us, Mr. Scrooge. Sing? And Bob Cratchit, too. Good idea. I'll yes. fetch him. No, sir, you will not fetch him. Oh, Uncle, be kind. Kind? I pay my clerk 15 shillings a week. I doubt he's worth it, but I pay him. I pay him every week, and I expect him to work every week. But, Uncle, it's Christmas. Christmas? Bah, humbug. <laughs> Christmas? A humbug? Surely you don't mean that. I do mean that, Christmas. What right do you have to be merry? What reason do you have to be merry? You're poor enough. Oh. What right do you have to be miserable? What? Reason to be dismal. You're rich enough. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas is humbug. Nothing but sentimental rot. Oh, Uncle, don't be angry. Angry? What else can I be when I live in such a world of fools as this? What is Christmas time to you anyway, other than a time to pay bills without having any money? A time to find yourselves a year older but not an hour richer? That every idiot who keeps a Merry Christmas on his lips be boiled in his own plum pudding and buried in the stake of honey through a heart! Oh, Uncle! Nephew, you, you celebrate your way, let me mine. Celebrate? But you don't celebrate at all. Then let me alone. Let's sing. We yes. wish you a Merry Christmas. Yes. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. Wait a minute. Really, Uncle, Christmas is Christmas, a season of goodwill, a time to be forgiving and kind, a time to open your heart to those less fortunate, and for, to bring with it the understanding that only Christmas can. God bless it. Well said, Mr. Fred. Let me hear another sound from you, and you'll celebrate Christmas by losing your position. Christmas is humbug, nothing but a trick. Well, in spite of that, Uncle, come dine with us on Christmas Day tomorrow. My wife will be glad to welcome you. Uh, I'll see you both in hell first. Why, Uncle? Why? Why did you get married? Because I fell in love. Because you fell in love. Yeah. <laughs> we want nothing from you. We have no quarrel with you. Why can't we be friends? Good afternoon. Very well. Heaven knows we've tried. We've made every effort in homage to Christmas and shall keep our Christmas humor to the last. And if you change your mind, you're still welcome. Good afternoon. And Merry Christmas to you, Bob. Good afternoon! And a happy new year! <laughs> the same to you, Mr. Fred. Back to work, Crockett!
get back to work, Cratchit. It's, it's me hand, sir. They're so cold, I can hardly hold me pen, sir. If you applied yourself a little harder, that should keep you warm enough. Now get back to your work. Right you are, sir, but please, just, just one more piece of coal, sir. If this reckless spending continues, I can see that it will be time for us to part. Get back to your work! Uh, Officer Scrooge and Marley. Indeed it is, yes, sir. Do come in. Wow. Back to work, Cratchit! <laughs> uh, do I have the pleasure of addressing Mr. Scrooge or Mr. Marley? Mr. Marley's been dead for seven years. He died seven years ago this very night. Oh. Well, uh, we have no doubt that his um, generosity will be carried on by yourself, sir. His generosity? At this festive season of the year, Mr. Scrooge, we find it more desirable that we make slight provisions for the poor and destitute. They suffer greatly at this present time, <coughs> sir. Mm -hmm. Indeed, indeed. Many thousands are in need of even the simplest of comforts, sir. Yes, hundreds and thousands are want of common necessaries. Are there no prisons? Oh, plenty of prisons, sir. And the workhouses, are they still open? Yes, indeed, sir. And the tribunal and the poor law, have they ceased to function? Unfortunately not, sir. Ah, it pleases me to hear this. As I subscribe to these fine establishments. Oh, but what logic should I have to pay again? Well, but Mr. Scrooge, neither the prisons nor the workhouses provide what you and I would call Christmas cheer. <laughs> oh, precisely. So, Mr. Scrooge, what should I put you down for? Nothing. <laughs> <He's> nothing. <laughs> you mean you wish us to withhold your name? I wish to be left alone. I have to support both the prisons and the workhouses, and they cost quite enough. Idle people who are badly off must go to them. They can't go to them. And many would rather die than suffer the disgrace. Then let them die and decrease the surplus population. It's none of my business. Sir, it is all of our business. Good afternoon. Where's your compassion? Good afternoon. Oh, what about your human kindness? Get off of my premises. Out! <laughs> Time to go home, I suppose. Well, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And do you consider you've done an afternoon's work? Well, there has been a rather lot of excitement, sir. And I suppose you want all day off tomorrow? Well, if it's convenient, sir. It's not convenient, and it's not fair. If I were to withhold a half a crown from your wages, you'd consider yourself ill-used. I'll be bound if you don't consider me ill-used for paying a day's wages for no work. It's only once a year, sir. Only once a year. A poor excuse for picking a man's pocket every 25th of December! However, I suppose you must have it. Be here all the earlier the next morn. I will, sir. I will, and thank you, sir. And Merry Christmas, sir. I'll just want a Merry Christmas. Humbug, I say. Humbug! <laughs> Curse the fog. Curse the stupidity of the world. Christmas. Nothing but stealing. Calling it charity doesn't change it from what it really is. And listen to the bells on the singing. It's nothing but pretense. Pretense, be gone, be off! Instead of getting down to work and solving their problems, they laugh and sing and expect everyone else to do the same. Jacob, Molly, and I, we avoided such nonsense. We worked hard and we lived frugally. Poor Jacob. You died seven years ago this very night. But you were a good man of business. Ah, but the business. Yes. Oh, curse the fog, curse the darkness. Oh, never mind. A house tucked away at the end of a darkened alley is always a good investment. Now, where's that door? 
Where's the key? Yeah, where's that knocker? What? What's this I see? Marley. Jacob Marley's face? No, Jacob. Don't want me like this. No, I'll... I won't believe it. I won't, I won't. There, yeah, there. Yeah. Fancy, brought on by a slight touch of indigestion, yes. <laughs> yes. He was never really there. This extraordinary occurrence was just a slight disorder of the stomach. Yes. Ah, ah. The cellar below is empty. No one behind the chair. Yes, Jacob. You died seven years ago this very night. But yet you taught me nearly everything I know. You were a good friend and a good man of business. No need to fully undress on a night like this. Not with a thick dressing gown like this. Dressing gown that will last for years. But what? What do you want with me? Much. Who are you? Ask me who I was. You're mighty particular for a ghost. <laughs> who were you then? In life, I was your partner, Jacob Marley. Can you sit down? I can. Do it then. You don't believe in me. <laughs> no, I don't. You, you doubt your senses. Why? Because my senses could be fooled. You could be a piece of undigested beef. <laughs> I believe there is more gravy than gravy in you. Uh. Or you could be a sliver of cheese. Or a dab of mustard. Uh. Or some undercooked potato. Uh. Uh. Mercy, mercy, why do you torment me so? Man of the worldly mind, now do you believe in me or not? I do. I must. <laughs> but why do ghosts walk the earth? And why do they come to me? It is required of every man. But his spirit should go forth and travel far and wide amongst his fellow men. If he does not do so during life, he is condemned to do so after death. As I am now, Ebenezer Scrooge, as I have been these seven years, trapped and tortured by remorse. Observe me, Ebenezer, lest you tread the same course. You are chained. Why? I wear the chain I forged in life. 
I made it. Link by link. I put it on of my own free will. By ignoring want and privacy. I never paused to think. Oh, oh Chico, please. Please speak comfort to me. Comfort? I have none to give. The chain you bear, Ebenezer, is much like mine. Its weight is great and ponderous. And when you die, this is the prize you will obtain. The chain you forged yourself in life. Don't, don't be so hard on me. You were always a good man of business. <sighs> business? Business? Mankind should have been my business. The common welfare should have been my business. Charity, mercy, kindness, and benevolence should have been my business. Is there no hope for me, Jacob? I am here to warn you and to tell you that you have yet a chance of escaping my fate. A chance and hope of my making, Ebenezer. Thank you, Jacob. You were always a good friend to me. You will be haunted by three spirits. Is that the chance and hope you spoke of, Jacob? It is. I think I'd rather not. Without their visit, you cannot hope to escape the path I tread. Expect the first tomorrow when the bell tolls one. Couldn't I have them all in once it happened? Expect oh. the second on the next night at the same hour. Expect the third on the next night when the last stroke of twelve has ceased to sound. Do not expect to see me again. Jacob, I just don't want to tell her. For your own sake, Ebenezer, remember what I've passed between us. Remember! 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 Quarter past the hour. Half past the hour. A quarter to. Spencer, who's coming was foretold me. I am. Who and what are you? I am the ghost of Christmas past. Long past? No, your past. May I ask what business brings you here? Your welfare. I'm much obliged, Spirit, but cannot help but think that a good night's sleep would better to be better. Come. But where will you take me? To see moments of your past. Moments you have forgotten. I... Are you afraid? No, but... Let me touch you. 
No, no, no. Stay away from me. Don't touch me. No, no, no. Oh. Remember it well. I was raised there, here as a child. I could walk at nightfall. I remember each and every face from all those years ago. No, Spirit, don't take me away. Let me stay. Let me stay. Don't. Quickly, Spirity, take me where you will. I'll follow. Poor child. It's me, spirit. I was lonely. I had no friends. Father hated me, so I was seldom home. My only friends were in those books. Ali Baba, Robin Wood, Robinson Crusoe. They were my friends. Five years I spent in this place and never a happy moment. But do you remember the day you left? Look. Master Screw! <coughs> Master Screw! Ah! Master Screw. Sir? We have a visitor here for you, Master Screw. Your sister is here to see you. My sister? Come in, young lady, come in. Bring down Master Scrooge's box and see that it's loaded on the coach. Oh, yes, sir. Dear, dear brother, I have come to bring you home. Home, home, home. Home, little fan? Yes, Ebenezer, you're coming home for good and all. Home forever and ever. But father. Father's agreed. Oh, you won't even know father. He's so kind, so changed. What so happened? Father's much nicer now and everything <coughs> is heavenly. The other night he spoke so gently to me when I was going to bed that I did ask him just once more if he can come home. And he said yes. And he's arranged for a coach for me to come and fetch you and you don't have to come back here anymore. Going home to stay, the father and you. This is the day I've dreamed about. I can't believe it's true. We'll have such good times together. Quickly now, we mustn't wait a minute. So, farewell, Master Scrooge. We are sorry you must depart. <laughs> I am particularly sad for the loss of your fees. <laughs> It's a financial blow. Share a glass with me. I give a toast to Christmas and to Master Scrooge. May you treat the world as it has treated you here. <laughs> to Master Scrooge. Don't. Delicate as the flickering light of a candle. She had a very generous heart. 
Yes, she did. I will not deny it, Spade. God forbid! She died a very young woman, a married woman. She had one child, I think. One child? Only one? My nephew, Fred. Come, let us see another question. I recognize it well. I was apprenticed here. What's the matter? Nothing. Nothing in particular. Something, I think. It's just that things might have been different if... But never mind. And there's old Fezziwig. Oh, alive and well. You are to wrap up warmly if you are to go out on such a night as this. Must you really go? Oh, yes, Father. Dear Bosom's poor mother is very ill, and I think she looks forward to my visit. Yes, I'm sure she does, my dear. I'm sure she does. But sometimes I wish you'd think less of accompanying others and a little more of yourself. Myself, Father? Yes. It's time you were thinking of finding a nice young man to be your husband. Father! Well. My dear, here you are, pretty as a pigeon, and lots of young fellows eager to call upon you if only you would let them. But, Spectre, our father, but you see, any young man will do for me. I'm looking for a man with a heart of gold and not a trace of selfish thought. That's very fine, my dear, indeed. But you may be searching for an ideal that does not exist. Don't worry, father. I shall find him one day. Spirit, show me no more. Conduct me home, I beg. One Christmas more. <clears throat> Time has talked, and three years have gone by, and now it's Christmas Eve. I remember! All right, now, that's enough, you two. Oh! 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 No more work tonight. Christmas Eve, Ebenezer. Get Christmas. Right. Christmas Eve. Let's have lots of room here. Yes, sir. Turn away, my lad. Turn away. Bring it up, Christmas Eve. Yes, Bring it up, Christmas Eve. Quickly. Very good. Oh, oh, oh. 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 Thank you, thank you. <laughs> 
That's more like it. Mrs. Pacific will cheer us on and I will lead the dogs. Now to it, lads. <laughs> May I have this dance, Miss Bell? I'll be delighted. <laughs> I'll be delighted. Oh, I'm going to be delighted. Delight! Oh, I can feel the spirit of the season in my feet already! Oh. Oh. Now, everyone knows the musician's call. Two, three. Oh. Exactly how it was. I remember it all so clearly. Oh, what fun we had in every year the same. What a good man he was, dear old Fezziwig. <laughs> oh, such a small matter to make these silly people so full of gratitude. Small? Was it not? He spent but a few pounds, three or four at the most. Is that so much to deserve such praise? It's not that spirit, it's not that. He had the power to make us happy or unhappy. And the happiness he gave us was as if it. Cause. Oh, won't you? What's the matter? Nothing. Nothing in particular. Something I think. It's just that I would like to be able to say a word or two to my club, Bob Cratchit. That's all. Quickly, my time is running short. Let us see another Christmas. Don't show me this spirit, I beg you. This might have been called the crossroads in your life. You had to choose. I thought I was doing the right thing. My whole life depended on it. Your life? What of others? What of their life? Their future was their own affair. It had nothing to do with me. Look again, and this time see. Look, I say. Oh, happy oh. anniversary, my dear. Uh. Happy anniversary! Happy anniversary! Don't try to get me now with happy anniversary. There's always something. Birthdays, Christmas, always something. It's nothing but humbug. Humbug, humbug, humbug. <laughs> For heaven's sake, Bill, don't start all that again. It's only you care about that money. Money, money, money. I want to want all the goodies and sold by my passion for gain. But, Belle, don't you see? If I can be rich, then life will be better for the both of us. For the both of us? Yes. Oh, don't deceive yourself, Ebenezer. Your greed is not sick from any thought of me. Belle? Uh, Belle, um, you see, uh, uh, business is a man's life, and 
There's no place for women. It's exactly. There's no place for a woman in such a life. Can't you begin to understand that maybe... Yes, I understand completely! I understand that I'm the way and the only thing that will ever matter to you is money. That's ridiculous. No, it's not! Believe me, Ebenezer, you will tell a very lonely man. Greed can never want your heart. Mel, what are you saying to me? I don't understand. Take it. a turning point in your life. Nothing but humbug. Show me no more spirit. Bear me home, I beseech you. I told you that these were the shadows of things that have happened in the past. They are what they are. It has nothing to do with me. Take me home, I beg. Take me home. I will take you home, but learn from what you have seen here. I will, spirit. I will. Come, follow. 